you heard it everywhere. The government and the industry technology giants want to crack down on fake news and Russian propaganda. There is even a new legislation coming such as the 2017 National Defense Authorization Act. It provides $160 million dollars to specifically understand the spread of Russian propaganda and develop counter strategies. And that's just one piece of legislation. DARPA, the technology arm of the Department of Defense, has already studied fake news and propaganda years ago before it was a big topic on the news. Infowars.com has a big red warning on the top of the site right now saying emergency. The government has announced they want to shut down this site. So if you go there, you will see that it's uh, impossible to miss. And you're supposed to sign a petition um, begging President Trump, begging President Trump to help. So uh, you have like 48 hours left to sign this petition. Of course, the government is not going to shut down Infowars.com anytime soon simply by labeling it fake news. Because the government does not want a big court case and then lose it. The government does not want Alex Jones or somebody familiar win in front of the Supreme Court in a few years and get major attention. The American elite does not really care that Trump became president instead of Hillary. Trump is filling more and more important posts with uh, CFR members, insiders and close industry associates of Hillary. The American elite cares a lot more about the fact that fake news and stolen emails had a significant political effect and influenced voters. The elite does not care if people watch esoteric alien conspiracy videos on YouTube and smoke pot while doing so. The elite does care, however, when an average citizen can write a fake story in 10 minutes and influence millions of potential voters. It is perfectly legal for someone to go on social media and spread the fake news, the fake report that the Pope has just endorsed Donald Trump during his presidential campaign. But it is also perfectly legal for social media to kick out such people who spread fake news or Russian propaganda. Infowars and familiar places could be kicked off YouTube and Facebook, which are private companies and they have very broad user policies. And Infowars is dependent on infrastructure such as server hosting, content distribution networks, satellite uplinks, and so on. It would cause severe damage if Infowars and other places get boycotted by such infrastructure companies. It's hard to compete with mainstream media if you have to pay for every hour of video you want people to watch out there uh, without uh, them paying you. It's hard to compete if you only do web audio instead of video. And it would be hard if you lose real radio stations and only broadcast on the web. And the situation could get much worse. Once Russia invades the rest of Ukraine or the Baltics, because Russia is not simply, not simply going to send out its troops and call it an invasion, they're going to play this as another proxy war, using their covert agents and other assets in the target countries. And uh, the Russians are also going to use their agents of influence in uh, Western countries, in Western Europe and America. Russia will give Russian passports to Russian-speaking people in the Baltics and Ukraine. Suddenly, these phony revolutionary groups will appear well-trained and armed, uh, armed and trained for years in secret by Russian intelligence and military advisors. And those target countries will be destabilized and Russia will act as the superpower which brings order to the chaos. Russia will send so-called peacekeeping troops and immediately recognize uh, the new republics diplomatically. Alex Jones and countless other alternative media outlets will do the same thing they have done since at least 2008. Spread Russian lies and spin. It's the same basic spin we've seen from the Western communists during the Cold War. Only NATO gets blamed, even though Russia is exactly as dangerous and aggressive. NATO gets accused of intending a world war against Russia, the encirclement of Russia myth, and so on. But this time around, in the near future, Alex Jones and many others will likely be labeled as agents of influence for Russia's foreign policy. 
direct agents of influence. Uh, they will be called guilty of psychological warfare. And this will be on a whole different level than what we're, what we're seeing now. And God forbid Jones and others have connections to Russian think tanks or secret advisory contracts with Russian entities or front organizations or contact with Russian agents. Then these alternative media people would be screwed. God forbid you have some important Russian guy defect to the West who delivers evidence uh, that alternative media people in the West have a relationship with Russian intelligence. Whether these alternative media people have just been played or made a deal with the devil, this is going to backfire. At some point over the next 10 years, you might see a limited nuclear attack. A limited nuclear attack against the West by Russia and China. Because the Eastern economy is failing, whereas the Western elites could create an economic boom anytime they want. The West has more money and technology, and it is only a question of time until the West develops game-changing weapons. That puts pressure on the East to strike first, because there is only a limited window of opportunity here. If the East attacks in that fashion, propagandists will be chased through the streets and locked up in America and Europe. They will be discredited forever. The establishment wants to discredit people like Alex Jones. They want to destroy the symbol of Alex Jones. Killing and destroying the physical person Alex Jones right now would be very counterproductive for the establishment. And uh, so they want to destroy the symbol of Alex Jones, and Jones has given the enemy a lot of ammunition. So right here I have a... Um, right here I have an example of this. It's a video from the... Official Infowars channel, YouTube channel. Putin issues desperate warning of World War III. And it is this ridiculous collage of, um, of quotes by Putin as if, you know, uh, stations like RT, RT America, Russian Today America, as if they were not spreading all this propaganda all day, every day. But no, supposedly we need Infowars... Uh, Infowars telling us that um, supposedly Putin wants peace and he's just being on the on, on the on the defense and uh, he, Putin wants to save the world and he warns everyone in the West and he tries to warn people and he tries to stop it and only NATO wants this big world war and uh, NATO is completely crazy and they want to start World War Three uh, tomorrow or next week. Complete junk. Complete and utter junk. This is the same kind of propaganda you saw from the communists during the Cold War. I'm sorry. Uh, Russia is a very, Russia is a very, very, very uh, dangerous dictatorship. And Russia was built by the West with Western technology, modern Russia. And also, um, uh, and also uh, between the end of the Cold War, 1991, and the Ukrainian crisis in 2014. That was almost a quarter of a century during which uh, the West, again, very strongly supported the East with technology transfers and looking the other way and uh, trade deals and that sort of thing. So this is, this is the garbage. This is the dangerous garbage they put out. Putin issues desperate warning of World War Three. Complete and utter junk, it gets almost 1.8 million views. And most videos on that channel get a few thousand views. But of course, you uh, you put this in the headline. You put this in the headline. It's It sounds dramatic. It sounds like like uh, the video contain, contains something you don't already know or something that is new. And uh, it sounds like the threat is imminent. And so uh, this this gets the most views. It's not just Infowars putting out this junk. Uh, it's also the audience demanding this junk because it's what people want to hear. They when people want to hear there's this good guy in the East, Vladimir Putin, the supposed conservative hero, and he's going to go 1776 on the Western globalists, and uh, he's going to save us with his nukes and his uh, smart brain and so on. Another video. From Infowars, Putin declares war on the Luciferians, 
So now Putin is this Christian figure and this figure of light. And Putin is fighting the darkness. Putin is fighting the devils, uh, the Satanists in the West. So this is an interview with Steve Quayle. Steve Quayle. Putin declares war on the Luciferians. Very clickbaity headline. Very deceptive of 600,000 views. So, Russia's techniques for disinformation, fake news, spin, and theft of information as basis for leaks are nothing new. Such information operations were commonplace in the Soviet era. The difference today... The difference today is the internet and social media. But the social media giants and the internet infrastructure is in the hands of the Western power players. It's very unlikely that we will see a sizable, honest, free speech competitor to Facebook, YouTube and Google. These giants can now delete user accounts as they wish. And if the Western elites cannot outlaw freedom of the press directly, they can make it too costly and too complicated and overregulated. It's very important to understand. They will simply unleash a ton of lawyers anytime there's a new Pizzagate scandal. But by the way, the owner of the restaurant, which is supposedly the center of a pedophile ring, and still there's no substantial evidence, I know uh, that there have been real pedophile rings uh, that, that have been uncovered. And, um, and there, we need more investigations into that sort of stuff, but it needs professionals. It needs uh, professionals, it needs solid evidence, it needs uh, professional investigators and professional journalists. It does not need a bunch of premature internet buzz that leads nowhere. The owner of the restaurant has already said he was going to take legal action against bloggers and websites. I'm sure you've heard that a guy armed with a rifle entered that restaurant a few days ago looking for children to rescue. Well, <laughs> what was this man thinking? I mean, if he actually had rescued children, he would be a national hero. But um, <laughs> he was kind of late to the game. He was very late to the game. You know, this, this uh, Pizzagate buzz has been on the web for weeks, so even if there was a pedophile ring, it's long gone now. The perpetrators would have been warned. They would have gone someplace else, um, destroyed a bunch of evidence, so uh, any professional investigation now is impossible. So weeks after this buzz, weeks into this buzz, this man walks into this restaurant with a rifle trying to save children. Yikes. Um, this is just... Um, yeah. Now, in the very near future, you can be sued for all kinds of blog posts and YouTube videos. Anybody in alternative media needs to be aware of this and take precautionary measures. Be very careful what you put out there. Check your sources, get real evidence, label speculation as speculation. The wife of President Trump recently sued the author Webster Tarpley. I'm sure you're, you've heard of him before, sued Webster Tarpley and a few other people for spreading the rumor that um, the wife of President Trump had been some sort of an escort once. And this could cost Tarpley $100,000 or more. I haven't seen Tarpley on the Alex Jones show in a while, and you are probably not going to find anything about this on Infowars. Now, Infowars itself is now begging, uh, begging or petitioning Donald Trump to protect Infowars from being shut down and designated a fake news outlet. Here is that, here is that big fat banner. Emergency, the government has announced they want to shut down this site. Ask President-elect Donald Trump to take a stand against the establishment's desperate move to label independent media as fake news. Well, sorry, Mr. Jones, and sorry, Infowars, and sorry, everybody else, but Trump is establishment. There was never any credible reason to trust that man. It was all just a bunch of hype. A bunch of phony fake hype uh, on Infowars and other places. So now we got Trump and um, and Trump is not necessarily going to help you. 
Trump might help Infowars. Uh, Trump uh, might help Infowars if Infowars becomes semi-mainstream, quasi-mainstream, and continues to praise Trump as a new Ronald Reagan or Richard Nixon. You know, big talk, anti-establishment talk, but filling the cabinet and the administration with insiders from the CFR and the banks and so on. So, well, the Donald has been a very has been very vocal about opening up libel laws to crush anybody who gets in his way. Donald has sued countless of people, and because the legal system is so terrible, the person with more money and connections usually wins. Small bloggers can't risk a court case dragging on for years, costing hundreds of thousands in legal fees. And once, um, once there's no more money being made in alternative media you know, or, or it becomes too difficult and the risk becomes too high you know if, if uh, Facebook kick, kick out all of these and YouTube and Google they kick out all of these clickbait factories if they kick out all of these clickbait factories and you can't make easy money anymore with uh, phony news that you write in 10 minutes like the Pope has just endorsed Donald Trump's uh, pre uh, presidential candidacy if you can't make money like this anymore, and if the risk gets high that you get sued and you, you lose $100,000 for one blog post, if it comes to that, people in droves will leave this alternative media circus. They will not do that anymore. They will take any other job, but not this. So once the money is gone and the risk is high, uh, the alternative media and, and you know Facebook shuts you out. The alternative media can can collapse. The alternative media can uh, break down to a large degree. So that's why you have to listen now carefully and prepare for uh, a changed environment and prepare for new kind of attacks. And putting out a petition begging Donald Trump to help you is not going to fly. Maybe it's going to fly with Infowars because they have spread all this phony hype, phony Trump hype, and help Trump become president. Maybe, you know, Alex gets uh, uh, has some help back, but you out there and me, we're not going to get help from the president. So, um, small bloggers and YouTubers cannot risk a court case dragging on for years, costing hundreds of thousands in legal fees. The Western elites at the very top knew, of course, that they had built the Soviet Union through technology transfers, and they knew that the Soviet Union did not really disappear in 1991. They knew perfectly well that Russia was going to gather strength again and use agents and agents of influence and in information operations. Western intelligence prepared for this a long time ago. Western elites just acted as if they didn't care about Russia for 25 years. In 2014, with the Ukrainian crisis and lots of Russian disinformation, Western elites publicly said they were totally surprised and shocked, and now they want to fight Russian propaganda. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they have prepared for this fight for a long time. They watched how alternative media got into bed with the Russians. How it got so bad that the blogs and websites at some point, simpl at some point simply regurgitated Every silly Russian lie without checking properly. And during the Cold War, Washington and Moscow acted in concert. Every side maintained the balance of power. And used the other side as a pretext for censorship, espionage and rampant defense spending. The Western corporation Siemens, a big player who is represented at every Bilderberg meeting, made the computers used by the East German Communist Stasi Intelligence Agency. The Stasi databases ran on Siemens computers. And so, um, the most, yeah, the most important databases, the most important Stasi databases ran on Siemens computers. In the old days, it used to be the Western Communists who spread Russian fake news and spin and who delivered the pretext for the McCarthy era and the witch hunts. Today it's mostly the new right, but also a lot of 
socialists still, who spread the mantra that everything is the fault of NATO and Russia is wonderful and simply defending itself. So, um, a lot of well-meaning bloggers have delivered the pretext for the coming crackdown on Russian propaganda. And so, now everyone who does independent media needs to prepare for this. You need to drop any Russian propaganda. It's a trap. Russian propaganda just looks like it damages NATO. But in reality, in the, in the long run, uh, Russian propaganda is helping NATO. Russian propaganda discredits Western patriots, conservatives. So drop it. Don't believe anything you see on Russian media outlets and assume that alternative outlets are simply copying and pasting from the Russians. Do your own research as good as you can. Check all kinds of sources. Get yourself a shelf full of good literature, reference books. Get to really know what you are talking about. Blame Russia when it's appropriate. Blame Western governments and also expose how the West had built the East and had supported the East intentionally and wide-ranging until 2014. Expose the balance of the superpowers. Expose the fact that the superpowers can make, pe uh, can make peace and form a horrible world government. Consider the fact that the superpowers might be secretly working together at the top already. So do not support people who are openly and continuously spreading Russian propaganda. Check facts for your reports. Check the facts as an audience. Be careful with direct accusations and label speculation properly. And here I have a small collection, small sample of uh, fake news on on Infowars. Uh, and this is just symbolic. I mean, these news have been spread at other places as well. Uh, so, yeah, what do we got here? 98% uh, of the Pacific Ocean floor are dead because of Fukushima, not true. Um, Infowars ran that story based on a new study in a scientific journal, but this study is actually just about a uh, the study is actually just about a very 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 small area. So uh, yeah, this is not true. Uh, Ninety eight percent of the Pacific Ocean floor is not dead because of Fukushima, even though Fukushima was a freaking scandal and and extremely dangerous. Uh, then here, Obama is an actor trained by Harry Lennox, Hollywood star Harry Lennox. Lennox trained Obama after 1990, uh, 1992. So, <laughs> so, somebody actually, I mean, this was a story on Infowars, but um, somebody asked Harry Lennox, and Harry Lennox said this is totally made up. And people have dug up old videos from from 1990, before Lennox and Obama met for the first time. And Obama, he, he talks like he talks today. And, uh, another fake news. Saudi Prince Bandar threatens Russia directly. Saudi Prince Bandar threatens Russia directly with terrorism during the Olympics. So, a bunch of... Bunch of places ran this story, but um, even even professional Russian propagandists uh, said, like, uh, Fyodor Lukyanov said, no, there's no evidence whatsoever. This is just rumors. There's nothing to this. And uh, Mr. Lukyanov, he's the editor of uh, Russia and Global Affairs. That's a Russian propaganda outlet. And he's a member of the Russian Council for International Affairs. And um, Russia and Global Affairs, by the way, cooperates with Foreign Affairs Magazine from the CFR. And uh, in the board of directors of Russia and Global Affairs, you can find the former KGB director, uh, Yevgeny Primakov. So here you have uh, Al Monitor. Uh, Fyodor Lukyanov explaining all of this. So even a Russian propagandist says, "No, nah, this this is fake. This is totally fake." Uh, and this fake new this fake report appeared in the Iranian Tehran Times, Infowars, Global Research, Forest News Agency, La Rouge uh, websites reported this, and a bunch of others. Then you had the 
Army Mass Murder Manual. Sounds pretty clickbaity and, and terrifying, but it was just based on a public, public, not secret document that dealt with uh, demonstrations that turn that, that turn violent, and so the government has to uh, has to return pressure. Uh, so there was nothing really there. Of course, there is a huge danger of of tyranny, but if you want to convince people, you have to do it with facts and not with something like this. Then uh, the U.S. U.S. planned to blame the shootdown of uh, MH17 over Ukraine, blame it on a defector from the Ukrainian army. And this was just based on a meaningless quote from the LA Times. Uh, the guy who claimed this, the guy who claimed this uh, was, um, the guy who claimed this, is the former Newsweek reporter Robert Perry, and, and if you will look at his blog, it's just Russian propaganda, and he, he really loves Russia, apparently. And um, this was all just speculation. And there were so many bad, terrible reports on Infowars and many other alternative media outlets. Terrible reports about MH17. Terrible reports about the Ukrainian crisis. So any garbage the Russians put out, any Russian garbage was hailed as evidence and and truth and nothing but the truth and anything that anything anything that went against that russian narrative was labeled evil mainstream propaganda and cia propaganda even though the western media the western mainstream media they do tell the truth when it suits them so if the if the mainstream media in the west says something it's not automatically automatically untrue you know it, it doesn't follow it's a logical fallacy, right? What else? Uh, nobody died at Sandy Hook. Uh, was basically the the reporting at Infowars. Nobody died at Sandy Hook because the dead did not appear in an FBI statistic. And the deceptive headline at Infowars was, according to FBI, nobody died at Sandy Hook. So here is the... Here is the original, uh, the original uh, article from Infowars. FBI says no one killed at Sandy Hook. Agency publishes crime report showing zero murders occurred in Newtown in 2012. <laughs> this is a fake report. This is fake, fake BS by Infowars. And on top of this, you see the petition. You know, Donald Trump, please save us from being shut down. You know, we're being labeled fake news. I mean. And so, what's behind this? Well, I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Um, there was um, a there was a report, a statistic for Newtown, and the statistic uh, listed zero murders. But there is a footnote that says does not include the twenty seven victims of the Newtown shooting. Uh, further information can be found at the state police, uh, state police uh, statistics, where they label, uh, where they list these these dead people. So it was the jurisdiction of the state police. So uh, the dead were listed somewhere else, and uh, even in the complete total statistic for the state, uh, the dead are being listed and counted. So the, the, the Sandy Hook case fell under the jurisdiction uh, fell under the uh, jurisdiction of the Connecticut State Police. So for bureaucratic reasons, it was not listed uh, for the Newtown statistics, but, you know, higher up statistics. And so, um, yeah, Infowars, um, they, they made fools out of themselves by saying it was all a bunch of actors and crisis actors and nobody really died and it looks like nobody died. And, um, I'm not, I mean, it's, it's not illegal to be incompetent. It's not illegal to make mistakes and put on crap, but, um, maybe, I mean, even if somebody, if somebody puts out stuff like this, if somebody puts out stuff like this, knowing it's, it's untrue, uh, 
just to get attention. That's not illegal either. That is simply that is simply being dishonest. Now, of course, if you blame certain people, uh, like some people do on on YouTube, and you attack the parents of victims and and you harass them and you you accuse them of being actors. I mean, at some point, you're going to commit crimes. You know, this is this can be become stalking. This can be this can become um, libel and that sort of thing. And you might you might get sued if you do that. And in the future, we're going to see more of this. We're going to see lawsuits and bloggers getting betting, getting bankrupted, getting ruined, and this is going to scare off other people. So there's a lot of cynical cynical uh, reporting uh, nowadays in the alternative media, people know if if I don't put out this garbage, if I don't put out the garbage that people want to hear, I don't get the million views and the million clicks, somebody else is going to get them. So um, a guy like Alex Jones worked his ass off for, for 20 plus years to get where he is now, but some clickbait junk factories, they can get millions and millions of views instantly today because of social media. And using fake news, so um, this puts pressure on on everybody. You know, it's just you have to compete. You know, you you want to compete, and you have to compete, and you're pushed into you know reporting garbage just to get the attention, just to get the attention. Same thing on Infowars with the Boston bombings. Uh, you know, you, you have to be the first one to say the Boston bombings were an inside job, and this is the CIA and Western intelligence. And even today, there is no clear evidence that points towards the CIA. It's more like the actual evidence points towards a possible possible intelligence battle between foreign intelligence agencies and maybe a domestic American intelligence agency. So there's there's there are um, there's evidence that points towards Russia, one of them, one of these these Boston Bomber brothers supposedly had a Russian passport, received a Russian passport while he was applying for American citizenship, and um, it's 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 a complicated case, and you need professionals to analyze it, and uh, this can cost money, and this will cost time, and you have to be honest to your audience and say we do not know what this is right now. We're using our capabilities and our resources to dig out more, and we might not get anywhere, so. This is what you should tell your audience, and this is what you should do. But who is doing that? No one is. Everybody's just ranting. Oh, this is this looks like a total intelligence op. This was the CIA because uh, you had some uh, you know bomb sniffing dogs running around, and you had um, uh, private private contractors there running around. I mean, this is no evidence. This is no evidence whatsoever. And um. <laughs> And it always, always gets into this, this mantra of the Russians are the good guys, the Russians are the good guys, and only the West is aggressive and bad. Very, very dangerous. And 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 this sort of fake fakery and this sort of uh, baloney is not going to help you. It's not going to help me. Uh, it's, it's only going to help the Western establishment uh, and their crackdown. So stop it. Stop demanding this baloney. Stop looking for this baloney and stop spreading this baloney and tell alternative media people that they should stop it and this is not good for all of us. So um, that was my take on that. Please comment, like, subscribe, and um, share this video.